Tim Kai. That's an amazing, amazing performance. I'm sure you guys can't wait for the interview bit of it. But also another thing that you guys have been contributing to a lot. Like I'm so touched by these stories. Actually, you guys have been so unfair. Like I made, I, I did like a funny story about my mom's Kali side and whatnot. And then you guys have come and done all these sweet stories. It just makes me want to like give another story of my mom altogether. But yes, there are some of these that are, you know, <laughs> Clearly, everybody's mom, Malikwangam Kylie, because some of what you've have done, let me just read some of the tweets that you have. Um, so we have Teti who says, my mom relates so well with my friends. She'd be there giving them relationship advice, but the moment someone's tongue slips and mentions her, um, mentions that I have a boyfriend, she'd switch up her tone to Unataka Kuniwa. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, I can 100% relate to this. I don't know what, what the double standards are for, but yes, this does happen. And then we also have Don Africa who says, my mom is special because she took me to church and now having good morals and also she told me what I want uh, to do after high school is what I want and I'm glad. And this is so extremely important. Like these parents that just grow you. First of all, that I mean the moral compass thing, that's one thing altogether. And then just letting you be able to choose for yourself because I think that that's also something that maybe parents are, some parents are somewhat grappling with. And so I think your mom is a very inspiring um, you know, you should let her know that, uh, Don Africa. I hope it's not only on social media, but that you do tell her this yourself. And then we also have Doris who says, um, last year was terrible for, for me, from infected with TB to work frustrations to my daily ETC. Guess who came through? That's right, always your number one. I mean, moms are just so amazing. Like, they're the one person you can turn to. And there's actually situations that the only person that can make things better is your mom. Like, it doesn't work, matter if it's a work situation, if you're unwell. Like, it's not a doctor that's going to help you, and it's not your boss or your fellow workers. It's just your mom. Sometimes you just need your mom, even if she's not, like, actually going to change anything in the situation you just need to talk to her so I absolutely absolutely understand and this is so sweet and then we also have um is it Mac 12 or MC 12 who says Akuna kukula kwa inyumba kama hujaoga. <laughs> I'm sure every single one of us relates to this one, but I don't understand why as kids are too napenda kuoga. Like as adults, it's such a relaxing feeling, you know. And then we also have um, Doctor who says, I thank God for my mom. Just kuskia hashtag mama na I knew I'm going to get disciplined. Thank you so much, mom, for being tough on me. I'm sorry for the several mwikos that broke in the process. The funny thing is you sent me to get a new one just to continue. <laughs> thank you. I think that one is specifically for African moms. And so, of course, a lot a lot of feedback. You guys have such amazing stories. It just, it just, moms are just amazing. But I will keep reading them, of course, all through the course of the show. Um, so, you know, keep sending them. But for now, it's back to Amina. Thank you so much, Usha. Now, approximately 47,887 people get this disease annually here in Kenya, while 32,987 die from it every single year. Many options in treatment include surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy to destroy affected cells. We're talking about cancer. And today in studio, we're joined by this young, bubbly soul who's about to share a story of how she nearly died. And at, as she does that, she's wearing a big, big smile. Ladies and gentlemen, Shienze. Hi, Emma. Hi, Shienze. Hi. Miss Kasoha. <laughs> Shienze. I should give you a... Uh, um, like a manual to pronounce my name. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Why? But at least you've done one nicely. Yeah, it's the one guess. It's, uh, I, you you already practiced. You should yeah. be, I should do halfway. it quite often. Yeah. We're halfway there. <laughs> how are you, Shienze? I'm okay. No, truly, how are you? Um, like, um, like, honestly, genuinely, truly, right now, how are you? I, I've, I usually reply like one day at a time because some, some moments, um, I'm really at 100%, and then you see me the next minute, I'm um, at 5%. So it varies, it's a variation, yes. Yeah. But all in all, yeah, one day at a time. <laughs> now, please note that right before the interview, she and they actually could not come on to do the interview, and she has this big smile now, I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm just taken aback by it. Now, she and they, tell us about your relationship with this, deadly enemy okay um my my journey was was just like a normal journey i knew that it's it's hormonal imbalance i had very severe like very long sessions of of menstruation and i would um i would be given contraceptives to control the 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 length of the days yeah mm. so but when i was in form two like it really persisted i had 
my form two year, the whole year, I was in and out of hospital and I had my menses the mm. whole the whole year. So um, at that time, it was not like really alarming because I was uh, I was I was in school and I was like ah, provided um, I'm not dying or something, mm. it's okay. So. My mom at that time mm. decided now to see a gynecologist or yeah. something. Yeah. So the gynecologist gave me the contraceptives. We tried things. Um, we t they tried a lot of methods. We tried some herbs and stuff to see like why is this happening for a long time? Because it was also causing stigma on my side. Um, because ha imagine you're in school and after every 40 minutes during the break, you have to go to the bathroom because they were heavy, extremely heavy. Mm. So my principal then, Mrs. Moti, just decided like she's going to take this as a responsibility. Yeah. So she used to cook for me. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's nice. Yeah, she used to cook for me this Kienyoji stuff. And yeah, along the way, we, I was just being able, I was just able to run a normal life in school, but there was a lot of stigmatization because yeah. of the contraceptives and a mm. lot of men menstruation period. Now in Form 4, you had a stroke. Yes, I had, um, I had what do they call, convulsion something. Mm. So I had uh, two weeks, exactly two weeks before the KCC, I, had a, I fell unconscious and yeah, the, I was admitted at Avenue Hospital and my left side could not function. And yeah, it's two weeks before KCC and they thought maybe it's, um, it's a mental disease or something. Uh, they came up with their own uh, judgment and stuff, but the issue was actually related to the menstruation cycle mm. because I had gone through the, um, the disease for a long time and I was just being given medicine that they try. Like you, you, get to, to do, you go to a different doctor, they give you this contraceptive, you go to another different doctor, they give you an injection or something else they they just try out like they didn't know what it is they're just and guessing yes they're guessing so oh, wow. i was in hands of people i trust but they were not giving me the right solutions yeah yeah so it was a bad it was a bad hurting experience when i got to realize years later if things were done right from the word go i would not have had to go through but i said okay it happened let me let me shake the dust and move on. Like, yeah. yeah, I just forgive myself and forgive the mistakes that were done and decided, let me do it. Yeah. So um, that was about um, just before elections. I so this is after, so we're, so if, because we're talking about, you know, the story, is, you know, as, as yes. it's going on. Yeah. And so, you know, in Form 2, we talk about, you know, the the hormonal imbalance mm -hmm. they said right mm -hmm. where you had heavy men uh, mm -hmm. you know you you were menstruating heavily mm -hmm. and then now you know in form four you have your you have the stroke yes. and then now there's the endometriosis that was yes. wrongly yeah. diagnosed mm -hmm. so now was the treatment of the endo that led you losing your ovaries yeah i think the endo treatment is what really like affected everything because the treatment is vigorous you know because before endo, I was told I have ovarian cysts. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, cyst is normal, you know? People, it's like having a kidonda. Yeah. Mm. So um, cyst was not alarming because um, many people were saying once you give birth or something, the cyst goes away. Or something. You mm. know those things ladies say around? Yeah. I think you understand. I do. <laughs> so there was that. Then they said, um, there is fibroids, and I was like, okay, this is this is fine, yeah. It's treatable. Like I've seen a couple of people uh, talk about fibroids, and they are doing much better. Then, mm, boom, it's endometriosis. I was like, oh, which one is this now? I have not heard of it, so I decided to Google about it. I didn't have a lot of information about it, and I just took medicine, and we 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 began. Because mm. I, I, even when I'm having those long sessions of menstruation, I don't have pain. I don't know what cramps is. Mm. So I can't tell you I know how people feel about cramps and stuff. So the doctor thought it's endo, but I was not having, and he had not done any test or something, but he just went through endo, treat, endo treatment. So because I trusted the doctor, I, 
I, I, I just proceeded, yeah? I proceeded and did that for a really long time. And then it got worse. And now I was in business and I could be able to sustain myself. Mm. So when I, when I did that, um, I decided to start doing regular, change the gyna and do a different gyna. And then that's when um, it built up to 2017. And then, ah, boom, I know I have ovarian cancer. But I was really in denial because I thought, like, cancer is a disease for old people. And I was looking at, you know, how Google is solutions to everything. I, was, I, I, would, I would Google um, young people who have ovarian cancer. No one. So I was like, no, this is just for the old folks and people. Oh, wow. Yes. So I, that's kind of delayed me in starting treatment immediately. And on the other hand, my mom was really unwell. So I, I, I couldn't at all. I couldn't at all just do the treatment immediately. Yes. Yeah. And all this is happening when you're so young, at 22 I years know. old. Now, everyone knows you as a fashion designer, yes. right? So, you know, as you know, as I said, so form two, this happens, mm -hmm. and then form four, this happens, and then after school, this, you know, happens, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you, you know, you lose your, it's just been one thing after the other, yeah. after the other, she ends it. Do you ever question God? I do that a lot, and I remember as late as um, three weeks ago, it was hard, it was really hard, and I was like, why? Why would you choose me to go through this again? You know, I had finished this thing and I have to go through it again. So it was really a hard, a hard, a hard time. Mm -hmm. But I remember my friends, um, my friends came through and um, they would tell me like, you know what she and they, we know you and we believe in you. Mm. You are going to fight it. Yeah. So the, my my friends said repeatedly, and that is what gave me the confidence to to start. Yeah. So and then um, I remember they told me, don't worry about anything. What you want you to do is focus on your medication, and yeah, just be happy and your sister. So I was like, wow, how am I going to focus on that? And how is how is my my medication going to be paid? And how am I going to live like a normal life like someone else? Mm. So it's really taken a lot of of support and a mm. lot of a lot of belief from my for my my fellow industry mates and stuff, and it's really given me that confidence to move on. Yeah, yeah, because some of them even took over on managing my business, and they have their own businesses. Yeah, so it's like, wow, this thing looks like it's really serious. I I better <laughs> I better admit it or. Yeah. <laughs> Or I'm going just to disappoint many people. So yeah. I said, for the sake of my sister and for the sake of my friends, I'm willing to go through the end of the journey. You keep again. talking about your sister, your sister. Tell us about your sister briefly. Tell yes, us about my your sister, sister is, is my best friend. And she is 13 years old. And she's in Form 1 at Sito's Girls. Mm. And she's my only sister. So yeah. yeah. Then I have another sister who is adopted. She's Joyce. And she's the one who is really intentional running the business getting to here like actually i think she's the one also who helped organize me coming here yeah yes when i had the laps she was the one running everything yes now you said that you wanted to die slowly because you didn't have the funds for chemo yes you said you had no strength to go out yes. and look for these funds and the only reason that you f kept fighting and agreed to even start looking for money for treatment was because of your sister. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes, yes, yes. I was like, um, since I have this report, and my mom is unwell, and uh, I cannot be able to, to fund this treatment. It's expensive. I'm in pools of debts. I cannot be able to sustain my life. So I'm not willing to go through the whole pain and do the treatment again. Yeah. Why can't they just die softly? Oh, you wow. know? Like you see that people who just die slow death, they don't have to go through the medication. Yeah. So I was just like, ah, this is like a really, I won't commit suicide. I won't go, I'll just die. Like I was like, the pain will just make me die slowly, no. slowly, slowly. And my friend was like, no, it's not supposed to be like that. You know, we are here for you. And I was like, 
we are here for you where are you like i was like where are you yeah, i can't i can't see you yeah so um it was like a collaborative effort it took a while yeah. it took a while it, it took i think i think one week of self assurance and then i was like mm, now i'm ready I, I feel like you guys have too much confidence let me pick mine. You know, you asked <laughs> something. You asked something. You looked back and you're like, where are you? Where are you? And you know, the people who are asking you to fight yes, for your life. Yes, where if you, you look, they're all right behind you. Those are the people who are fighting ah, for you. Us. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't want you to lose hope. And they don't want you to lose faith. And they want you to be around for a very long time. And they want you to beat cancer. And when you want to give up and you feel like you've reached at the end, and you have no more strength in you, they want you to rely on them and they have strength and they're gonna fight for you and you're gonna beat cancer. She answered, can you hear me? Hi. And I wanted to tell you that on behalf of the trend, we're gonna contribute 50,000 shillings to your kitty as you seek treatment. We want to say Pole, Pole Sana. So what do you want to say to your friends? Peeps, I'm selling one major. Hi, Shinze. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you this. This was a surprise. Helen Tawani is for here. You. <laughs> Guys, I need to tell you about this dress. Um, we made this dress, and that day I had an accident. And we were doing a shoot. And um, she couldn't believe that I was from an accident just to bring, I, I, we were doing a shoot and I forgot my dress. Mm -hmm. So a picky picky hit me from behind, I'm a the person. Mm -hmm. And I, like it was Safaricom, their Safaricom house. Mm -hmm. And um, a car passed over me and I was like, I have to do a shoot with Helen. And she waited for a long time and my phone is not going through. And then I came and I told her, you know what? I just came with your dress. I'm sorry, I I had an accident. <laughs> and but I like, made it. Yeah, 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 yeah why do you should you didn't have to go? Yeah, she's like, yeah, you didn't have to. And I'm like, no, it, it's okay. So anytime I see this dress, I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I haven't seen her since that time. So I'm yeah. like, yo. <laughs> now the fight um, against cancer is a worldwide fight. There's someone who said that it's constantly like being on a battlefield. You know that um, uh, you know you, you today you meet someone and then after a few weeks or a month you're told that they passed away. So you know a lot of the times people have no support and that's why you feel like you want to give up and that's why they had to show you that you don't want you shouldn't give up because they're there for you and you matter. You know what I mean? And just when it gets even harder, just know they're there for you to even carry you even further. So for everyone who's battling cancer directly or indirectly from around the world, anyone who's watching this from wherever, just know that we're fighting this war together. You can support Shienze and anyone else, to be very honest. Um, so for Shienze, there it is. Va Shienze and keep her alive. She's fighting for her life. So um, why don't you talk about pay bill and how people can access any of her outfits? Yes. You people, you have to down yourself. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> wow. And you know, it's so hard to surprise me. And just to add on that, uh, all the people you've seen here, they've just donated 100,000 towards your treatment. Oh, okay. okay. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I want to find out. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And there's also another event happening tomorrow. There is going to be an art sale. Um, uh, kids from uh, the uh, Kenyatta Hospital, uh, from uh, the Cancer Ward, are going to be selling their art. It's uh, the Art Extravaganza. It's taking place at Trademark Hotel. This is not GNZ, but this one is taking place at Trademark Hotel. So you can go ahead and you can buy the art that has been made by the kids from uh, the Kenyatta National Hospital. Usha, what are people saying on social media as you read comments? Tell us. You know, what, what are people saying? Are they watching? Where are they watching from? Are they sharing their stories? And what do they think, of course, of the bravery that Shiense constantly showcases? Um, right, so people are saying a lot. Unfortunately, it's taking a lot longer to load on the touch screen, but on my phone on Twitter, people are saying a lot. And I will, um, and I will, <coughs> I will, of course, um, be reading them as soon as it happens. But for now, just to remind you of the pay bill number, which should be up on your screen, um, right? 891-300. Remember, 
The account number is Shienze. So I'm just going to repeat that again. That's 891-300. And the account number is Shienze. But people are really, really um, touched. And of course, a lot of people just um, saying don't give up. A lot of people saying that they relate and they get it, whether they are um, indirectly or directly also affected by cancer. Amina. Thank you so much, Usha. I really appreciate it. Shienze, what do you have to say? I'm speechless. Like the fact that... I, you know, Gila talks to me on, on a daily basis, but this week he hasn't even sent a message. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, this is the thing you're planning. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm happy, I'm humbled. Um, I will fight this. Yes. Thank you. We stand by you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys are so awesome. Look at all of you beautiful people. <laughs> That was so cool. She like, there. it's really yeah. emotional. Yeah. But I just want to say <laughs> thank you. Before we begin the journey, um, I, I know I have an army, and I've seen it. I've been asking peeps, you're saying people are here. Where are they? Like, you're the only one who believes in this thing. So um, can you just do it by yourself or something? But um, I'm really thankful. I'm thankful also, Amina, for hosting me. Um, I used to do trend when Larry was here, so I didn't imagine I would be sitting here <laughs> talking about this. Um, I'm really honored and I'm thankful. Mm. I'm really thankful. So, oh, those so are actually the outfits when you were dressing Larry. Yes, mm. yeah, so I'm really thankful. And my family, my sister, my two sisters, I think they're here, yeah. Joy and. Uh, and uh, Bernadette, we are going to fight this. And any young people, any young person going through this, just know it's, it's not the end. Because if Shienza is still here, dressed up nicely with her heels, mm -hmm. and still running my fashion line, it's, it's, it's possible. Yeah, so thank you so much, Fashion Farm. Thank you so much. I don't know. <laughs> But Gilad and Helen, I think we have a bond to you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, everyone. Bye, Shienze, and keep her alive. We're going to take a short break. We're going to be back with more. You're watching The Trend. Hashtag Hamina at The Trend Live on social media. Thank you for coming, Shienze.